Karis Cotter's The Swallow is set in Toronto's Cabbage Town in 1963 and highlights two little kids who, upon their most memorable gathering, each think the other to be a ghost. When they figure out how to persuade each other they are alive, the two become quick companions. Rose and Polly are neighbors whose homes back onto the necropolis burial ground, however they couldn't be more unique. Polly lives in a riotous house brimming with kin, both natural and encouraged by her folks, and has for a long time needed to see a ghost. Rose, a lone youngster, is in many cases abandoned with a dreadful old servant while her business-centered parents work late and travel, and has consumed her time on earth attempting to overlook the ghost she's forever had the option to see. The novel switches back and forth among Polly's and Rose's first individual perspectives, and Cotter capably makes their two particular voices, every one of which is engaging in its own specific manner. Polly is engaging, imperfect, and amusing, while Rose is baffling and thoughtful in her forlorn, and frightful, life. The segments are exceptionally short, which is fairly jostling in early sections yet the construction before long blurs in significance as the story becomes the overwhelming focus. This is an original about sorrow and kinship, feeling imperceptible, getting comfortable with yourself, and long-covered mysteries. However, the swallow is rarely ponderous, and the best part is that it's truly creepy. Cotter constructs tension without falsely keeping data from the peruser. What's more, for bookworms, the writer's inconspicuous cap tips to most loved books are a delight. Like the very best ghost stories, The Swallow educates us more regarding the living than the dead. As Rose says, most ghosts are just dead people. Sad, lonely dead people. The angry and sad ones are the worst. They're the dangerous ones. It is a phenomenal expansion to Toronto writing with every one of the makings of a work of art.